September 7, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number one. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Fay. Prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edgeworth. I better not show any signs of weakness today, or will be on me in an instant. Yay, yeah, Will. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence she committed this murder. And we have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin, then. We may call our first witness, Your Honor. The prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. Sir, my name is Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well, sir. Let me use this form for the office to explain. The body was found by this window, here. And the cause of death? Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir. The murder weapon was a statue of Thinker, found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hands, sir. The court accepts this statue as evidence. They're still calling it a statue. Floor plans added to the court record. Now, Detective. Y yes sir You immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had hard evidence she did it, sir. Hmm. Detective Gumshoe. Please testify to the court about this hard evidence. Witness testimony. Maya Fay's arrest. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. Why? He had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Fay at the very moment of the murder. Hmm. The very moment, you say? Very well. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examine what? I couldn't say a single contradiction in that testimony. Whoosh! Smack! <laughs> hey, Maya just threw something at me. What's this? When my sister couldn't find any contradictions in a witness testimony, she would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. The witness always slips up and says something wrong. It worked lots of times. <laughs> I should have expected Maya would know some of her sister's tricks. Alright, let's give this a try. Something the matter? No, Your Honor. I'd like to begin my cross-examination. Okay, so yeah, that's just explaining... That note was explaining that we can press the L button to press a statement and ask for more details, basically. Um, generally, you want to do that in every statement in every testimony to get all the information. Um, you actually have to, you just have to press the important ones in most cases. Uh, but I'm going to do a few more, probably, just in case. Who did you say you got a call from? Hey pal, don't play dumb, you know who. The call was from a customer at the Gatewater Hotel, right across from the crime scene. Hmm, okay, I pressed. I'm not sure it did much, though. Right, please continue. The part we actually need to press on is, I believe, this bit. Hold it! Hold on just one second. Y yeah I heard correctly. You said you arrested her because you had hard evidence she did it, correct? Huh? Did, did I say that? Me? I heard you say it. You did say it. You said it. <laughs> Exactly what about this suspicious woman in Pink's claim as hard evidence? W what 
Miss May isn't suspicious, and she sure isn't pink, pal. W well, I guess she is pink. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid evidence, or solid proof, sorry, other than her claims, Detective? You know, she looks a lot like Glimmer. She's got the same sort of hair f thing going on. It's cute. Um, hmm, I guess pressing can have its advantages. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor, sir. There's something I should tell you about first, Your Honor. Very well, Detective. Let's hear your testimony again. Witness testimony. Hard evidence. After securing the suspect, I examine the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I find a memo written... Memo? Memo? A piece of paper. Written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab test results showed that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. How you like that? That's my hard evidence. Hmm. Before we begin cross-examination, I have a question for you, Detective. Y your Honor? Why didn't you testify about this vital piece of evidence the first time? Uh, uh I know. Uh, I'm real embarrassed I forgot about it, Your Honor, sir. Try to be more careful. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Alright, so the problem here is that we're saying that before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. But if we look at our autopsy report here, she was hit once and died instantly, which means that there's no possible way she could have written the killer's name in her own blood before dying. So I'm gonna present the autopsy report, like so. OBJECTION! Detective Gumshoe, there's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say that the victim, Mia Fey, wrote this note. That she was accusing the defendant, Maya Fey? That's really what you're saying? What? This isn't one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course she wrote it, who else could have? You have a backwards, detective. B backwards? The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. This is a report from your department, detective. Immediate death due to a blow from a blunt object. She died immediately. But... No butting your way out of this one, detective. Order, order. The defense has a point. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have had the time to write anything down. Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? W when? It was the day after the murder. It was the day after the murder. The prosecution's point being? That autopsy report is outdated, Your Honor. What? A second autopsy was performed yesterday at my request. Death was almost immediate due to a blow from a blunt object. But there is a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. N no way! Your Honor. It's quite easy to imagine the victim did have time to write Maya. That is all. I see. Damn you, Edgeworth. I should have known you'd have something up your sleeve. Why, Mr. Wright, you look shocked. Something you want to say? Mr. Edgeworth. I've heard there's nothing you won't do to get your verdict. What reason would you possibly have had to request a second autopsy report? Mr. Wright, the defense will refrain from personal attacks on the prosecution. No matter, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, say what you will, the evidence in this report is undeniable. Your Honor, I submit this report to the court. Uh, understood. The court accepts the evidence. Autopsy report updated in the court record. 
Well, Your Honor, the evidence strongly suggests the victim was in identifying the killer. I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yes. Darn, this isn't good. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> Phoenix, you're allowed to cuss, it's your own thoughts. <laughs> Prosecution would like to call the next witness. Sorry, its next witness. This poor, innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. Yeah, it's April. Let the witness, Miss April May, take the stand. I don't know how the judge knew it was April, because, like, Edgeworth, who was calling the witnesses, didn't say her name, but... <sighs> exactly what part of her is innocent? I think we should look like Glimmer, that's the innocent part. Witness, your name, please. April May, at your service. I don't know how to say a wink. I, I, I did just wink, but you can't see that. Um, so, um, bing! <laughs> I don't know. Wink, no, winks don't normally make a noise. <laughs> Order. An introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. The witness will refrain from wanton winking. Oh, Yes, Your Honor. Oh, whoa, what's this? This is not good. She's already captured the heart of every man in this courtroom. Men are gross. Tell us, where were you on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred? Um, gee, I was, like, in my hotel room? <laughs> I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from the Faye and Co. Law Offices. Mmm, that's right, big boy. Please testify to the court about what you saw. Witness testimony. Witnesses account. It's the same thing as testimony, I think. It was like 9 o'clock at night. I looked out the window, you know? And then, ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and... and... she hit her! Then the woman with the long hair... she kinda... slumped. The end. That's all I saw. Every little bitsy-witsy. Ding. <laughs> I still can't pronounce a wink. <laughs> Hmm. Well, Your Honor, I see. It is a remarkably solid testimony. I don't see any of the trouble to witness any. W wait, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright? What about my cross examination? I thought the witness's testimony just now was quite firm, didn't you? Mr. Wright, I understand you were Miss Mia Fey's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults in perfectly good testimonies. Hey, how dare you! Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? Obviously. I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination. But only because I have a feeling Edgeworth doesn't want me to. She has to have some weakness. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination. Okay, I can't actually remember what the weakness is in this testimony. Um, I might need to press it a bit. Hold it! Why did you do that? Huh? Why? Like, why what? Why did you look out the window? Were you expecting to say something? Oh, well, um, gee! What? That's it? She can't get out of this question that easily. I sort of, you know... I had a feeling. Well, I have a feeling she's trying to avoid the question. Maybe I should press a little harder on this one. Let's see how far I can run with this. Surely you must have had a reason to look out your window at that time of night. I... ooh. Mr. Wright, I will not have you badgering my witness. B badgering You insist on needling her with these trivial questions. I really don't think it should be allowed. Yeah, yeah, stop him. Poor girl! Order. Mr. Wright, you have been warned. Poor girl? What about poor me? 
Looked out the window. What did you see next? And then, ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. Hold it! Hold it. The woman with long hair, that was Mia Fey? Mm-hmm. Slender, sort of, well, some people might say pretty, if that's your thing. Your thing? And the person attacking her. Hold it! How do you know she was the defendant? Huh? Well, you know. She had a girlish physique. Women know these things. Look, I, I just know, okay? There's only one person at the scene of the crime with a short, girlish figure. Testimony is bulletproof, Your Honor. He's right. Uh, no, he's not. Hold on a minute, that testimony stinks! What? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that. Did you really see the defendant at all? <laughs> Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? Yes, what is the meaning? Somebody tell me because I'm clueless about this, I mean. Okay. If you had really witnessed my client, my affair, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis, except her! And I'm no expert on fashion, but her hair looks far from normal to me. How sad you're making her, Phoenix. Leave her alone. <laughs> <laughs> However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is bogus. But, but... Still, we don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, Your Honor. I saw her. And so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? Rawr. What are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? Uh, I saw what I saw. I just didn't think all the tractional details were necessary, darling. Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl. Promise. Wink. <laughs> I can't wink. <laughs> Audibly. <laughs> Your testimony again, if you would. Every time she tries to wink, I'm gonna just laugh a lot. It's great. Damn, I almost had her. I did see everything. I did! The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with that weapon. I saw it. I did. That that clock. That the kind of statue clock? The thinker, I think. Well, does the accuracy of my report not startle you? Tee <laughs> I see. I only wish you'd been so detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross examination. Alright, so the problem here is, as we've discussed in a previous case, the thinker doesn't look like a clock. It just looks like a statue, and April knows it's a clock. And it's been submitted as a statue to the court, so there's no logical way she would know that that is a clock. So we're going to object here. OBJECTION! Miss May. What you said just now was quite revealing. Revealing? Ooh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Naughty, Mr. Lawyer. You said that this statue of the thinker was a clock. There's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. <gasps> Another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock too. He was found guilty of murder. I mean, that... Not necessarily... I mean, Phoenix, come on. <laughs> order, order. Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? Ooh, uh... Objection! The witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course. You will withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. Questions are all I have, Your Honor. <laughs> so cheesy. 
And as you may recall, I've caught murderers with these questions before. Well, only once. Objection sustained. You may continue to question the witness. Whew, that was close. If you stopped me there, the trial would have been over. Huh? What? So what happens now? What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? That, that's... Because I heard it? Yes, I heard it say the time. So you've been to the law offices of Vainco? N no Hey, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard it from my hotel room. Hehe. <laughs> the law offices of Fane Co. where the murder took place. Murder took place. Is very close to the hotel. She could easily have heard the clock. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because... Well... See, as we might recall, Mia took out the clockwork to put in those other pieces of evidence, which means that the clock could not have gone off. Your Honor, members of the court, it is inconceivable that the clock in question rang. Inconceivable. I keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. That clock is missing. It's clockwork. So it's not a clock. <laughs> How could you possibly just take a look right now? Oh. See anything interesting, Your Honor? Is as the defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big, fat liar. F fat That wasn't fair. She's, she's not fat. She's, 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 she's quite svelte. I mean, not that being fat's bad, but she's not. <laughs> well, Miss May... I don't know how to tisk. Tisk tisk. Hmm. Quite a show you've put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty. Somehow, he knew. Well, the clock was in evidence. He might have looked inside. Like... I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty. As you say, it can't ring. However, I must ask, when was the clockwork removed? If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. This case is very similar to the first one. Hmm, that's true, that is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clockwork was removed? Haha, <laughs> impossible, of course. I have proof. W what? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? I don't remember him saying that earlier in this in, the, in this court case, so maybe not, but... Well, I was listening. Now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves when the clockwork was removed is... It's this conversation. Because it's... When it's Mia talking about how she took out the clockwork... And it happened in the morning before the murder. Take that! Take a look at this. Hmm, that's a very cute cell phone. Woohoo! You have a girly phone. Oh wow, April, I hate you. Why would you say something like that? That's shitty. <laughs> uh, well, wait, wait, this isn't my phone. Listen. Like, April, why, why would you, why would you masculinity like that? That's just terrible. This is the defendant's cell phone. It contains a recording. A recording of a conversation which she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Honestly, one of the most dated things about this game is the way cell phones look. Like, remember when phones looked like that? They had buttons on them? <sighs> order, order. The defendant's cell phone. This wasn't brought to my attention. Oh wow, that sprite of Edgeworth looks very different in this version. 
you couldn't really see his pupils in the in the previous versions of the game on the 3ds and all that I like how it looks it's good perhaps detective gumshoe overlooked it oh, the good detective better remember he's up for evaluation soon gotta say I'm starting to feel bad for the big fella let's hear the conversation So you just want me to hold on to the thinker for you then? If you could. Uh, I should probably tell you, the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame. I'm gonna take the clock work out, sorry. September 5th, 9.27am. Beep! Your Honor. I think this makes it clear the clock up was already gone by the time this was recorded. Which was well before the witness ever arrived at the hotel. Ma, ma, ma? Well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know that weapon was a clock? Well, well, isn't it uh, obvious? I saw that clock before. Uh, wh wh what store was it again? <laughs> I, I go to so many. Oops, I forgot. Wink. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> she wink. <laughs> so the witness had seen it before. That would make sense. Does the defense have any objections, Mr. Wright? Yes. The witness claimed she had seen it before. This directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce this evidence and prove the witness had not seen the clock before. Well, Larry made the clock. It's unique. Well, it's not unique, there's two of them, but the other one was a murder weapon already, so there's no way she could have seen it. So... Take that! It's simple. This clock was never in any store, ever. W what A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world. And the other one that isn't here is in police custody. Impossible! Everything is sold in stores! Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. <laughs> that lie. <laughs> it's so cheesy. I think in the previous versions of the game, this line actually had a question mark on the end because it's so silly that Phoenix didn't even, like, buy it himself. But it looks like they've changed it. Mm. Oh, excuse is not on sale today. Oh, ho, ho. What's it to you, porcupine head? That stupid clock doesn't matter anyway. Okay, she did it, and she should die for it. Die! Whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is a court of law, and the witness will remain calm. Her, her, her. <laughs> oh, 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 ho, ho, <laughs> s s silly me. <laughs> did I, uh, like, lose it? Uh, yes, I did. Tee hee. Think. Scary. Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? Hmm, oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, Your Honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. Miss April May, you need to open with a clock because... The witness had never held the clock in her hand. However, she had heard that it was a clock. She heard? That is correct, Your Honor. There is no other way she could have known to think it was a clock. And I can show you the proof. Well, this is interesting. Let's see it then. Show me evidence proving the witness had heard the motor from a clock. Well, this phone call says it's a clock. And she had a wiretap. So take that! Have a look at this. Ah! Ooh! Is it that? <laughs> I found this in Miss May's room. 
Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May, you were tra tapping the victim, Miss Mayor May's, Miss, Miss Mia Faye's phone, were you not? Ooh, oh, oh. Your Honor, this is irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure that it is. Objection overruled. It troubles me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Did the defense truly claim the witness was tapping her phone? Again, this with the datedness of this whole thing. Like, nowadays, everyone just has a wiretap in their house, and it's just normal because surveillance capitalism. <laughs> Whereas in this in this version of the story, it's a really strange thing that there's this wiretap going on instead of just a thing we've all accepted and apparently dealt with, and it's disturbing that we've done that. Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which it's not, you still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Oh come on, I just showed you the conversation. But, uh, can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah, I think I can. It's simple. What? <laughs> Here's my proof. The proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon was a clock is... This conversation. I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've seen that. Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Beep. Mia, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want you to hold on to for me. Again? What's it? What's it? What? What's it this time? That sounds weird. Contracting. Like I would say, what is it this time? What's it? Sounds weird. It's a clock. It's made to look like that statue, the Thinker, and it tells you the time. Miss April May, you used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? I... I... Objection! Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. La la... <laughs> Witness, answer the question. Did you tap her phone? Miss May. Shut up, all of you. What gives you the right to talk to me like that? You, you lawyer! It's not fair. All of you ganging up on me like that? Oh, so I'm the bad girl, is that it? Is that it? Uh, uh -huh. what? That did it. The court's seen the real Miss April May now. Now to deal the final blow. Why did you tap her, so her phone? We already know that April didn't do it because of the opening cutscene, so there's not much point accusing her of murder, so instead we're going to ask why she tapped the phone. Answer the question. Do I have to? Isn't this a murder trial? Isn't tippity tapping uh, irrelevant? Yeah, she's saying exactly what Edgeworth wants her to say. Miss May. He was tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. While this court does not condone the defense's tone of voice, he has a point. Well, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? Can you prove you had nothing to do with this murder, even though you tapped her phone? Ha! Huh, I'd like to see her pull that off. Mr. Lawyer, I saw that evil, evil grin. You were probably thinking, I'd like to see her pull that off, weren't you? Damn, she's good. <laughs> well, you're not the first man who's thought that, and of course I can and will. You can't be serious. No way. Way, I say, way! Oh, and I assure you I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. Hmm. Okay, so the killing happened around 9 p.m. at night? 9 o'clock at night? Why, that's just when I was getting room service from that sweet bellboy. R room service? Ice coffee, I believe it was. Ice coffee, you know, like normal coffee, but cold. You don't drink it quick, the ice melts, and then you have regular cold coffee. Ice coffee? Think I'm making this up? Ask the bellboy. Wink. 
Ergo, the witness was not on the scene at the time of the murder. I mean, I, I didn't accuse her of being the murderer, so like, who cares? So where does that leave us? It is my great displeasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's telephone. However, that is a separate crime with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. Her testimony stands. She saw the defendant, Maya Fey, commit murder. No, they're going to just let her walk away. She's, she's not a murderer. <laughs> There's no way I can win this unless I tie Miss May to the murder somehow. Well, does the defense have anything to say? Um, well, come on, think of something. The defense would like to call the hotel bellboy as a witness. There's something suspicious here, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you've sunken quite low enough already. I object to calling the bellboy. Why? What's your reason? Because I hold that the wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing. However, if you agree to one condition, I'll consent to calling this witness. Condition? If Miss April May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy, then you will recognise that Miss April May was not the killer, thus she is innocent. And thereby, you must also accept the verdict of guilty for Miss Maya Fay. Doesn't make sense. April's not the only suspect. That is my condition. What? I better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. Otherwise, Maya will be declared guilty on the spot. What should I do? Alright, I've got nothing to lose, except for, well, everything. Understood, I accept your condition. Hmm. Oh, you fell right into my trap. Uh oh. Uh, um, wait. Very well. The court calls the hotel bellboy to the stand. It's interesting, it doesn't have, seem to have a name. I believe we're ready for the witness to testify. He certainly does look like a bellboy. Oh, I want one of those little bickies on the plate there. They look yummy. Yes, sir. I received your summons in the middle of work, sir. I'm happy to be of service. That tea set looks rather heavy, so without further ado, the witness may begin his testimony. Very good, sir. Miss May's room service. I am the head bellboy at the Fine Gatewater Hotel in business for four generations. I believe I received a call after 8 o'clock in the evening from our guest, Miss May. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her at 9 o'clock on the dot, sir. I brought it to her at precisely the requested time, of course. And I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May, herself. I see. The defense begins begin its cross-examination. Right. I I'm ready. I hope. This is it. If I can't prove Miss May was involved with the murder si murder now, Maya will be finished. Okay, so... I already know that Miss May can't be the killer. Um, this testimony is fine as it is, but we can get a bit more information if we look at the right spot. Hold it! You are sure it was Miss April May herself? Absolutely, sir. Absolutely? Yes, sir. As in, so very absolutely, sir. It's an endearing mannerism of mine. How come you're so very certain? Well, when I brought the room service, uh, she, uh, the guest, uh, favoured me with a, um, an embrasser, sir. Embrasser? Is that French for embrace? It's French for kiss. Sir. But not a French kiss, sir. More of a peck on the cheek. Why would she have done that? I believe perhaps she was momentarily swayed by a prim demeanor, sir. It was a moment I shall never ever forget, sir. Sounds pretty fishy to me. I think our Miss May was up to something and wanted the bellboy to remember her. Precisely 9 o'clock, then? Precisely, exactly, and most definitely, sir. 9pm. How can you be so sure? Miss May was quite insistent that we brought them. Oh, bellboy. Tee-hee. I'd like, like, iced coffee at exactly 9 o'clock. So 
something like that, sir. Therefore, in her door at the crack of nine, sir. Why would she be so particular about the time? It's no good. There's nothing there. Is... is that it? Tsk, 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 I can't, I can't, I don't know how to tsk. Finally, you understand. This bellboy has absolutely no reason to lie. Now, if you have any decency, you will end this rather tedious examination here. Hmm, it was a bit tedious. The witness may leave the stand. I can't let this happen, can I? Wait, please wait. Yes, does the defense have something to add? One last question. Let me ask one last question. Objection. Your Honor, I must object. This charade of justice has gone on long enough. Now, now, Mr. Edgeworth. Well, all right, Mr. Wright. I'll give you one more question, that's all. Okay. This is really it now. This is my last chance. What do I ask him about? It doesn't actually matter what you ask him about. Any of these three options will make the bell voice give you a hint. Um that is the information we need. So I'm gonna go with uh bed making? Bed 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 making. Tell me about making beds that day. I was worrying I was wondering what you're going to ask, but bed making a new low. Now now Mr Edgeworth, the witness will answer the defense's question. Yes well it was quite like any other day's bed making. I changed the sheets, the pillowcases, and then I proceeded to make the bed. I had to bring pillows for two, of course, but they're quite light, you see. I see, thank you. Pillows... for two? Bellboy, what did you just say? Huh? Ah, oh, yes, pillows are light, sir? Bellboy, tell us the truth now. Was someone else staying in Miss May's room? I object. That was... Objectionable! <laughs> Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. Uh, yes, I see. Why did you not mention this in your testimony? W well, sir, you were. you didn't ask. Nice try. That's the sort of thing you're normally supposed to mention! Uh, yes, quite. Indeed. It was the, uh, uh good barrister there, Mr. Edgeworth, who. He asked me not to mention it if I wasn't specifically asked, sir. Oof. Y you fool. I've done it. I've won. Miss April may check into a twin room with a man. Correct? Yes, sir. Then, when you brought them room service, you didn't see that man in the room? That's right, sir. Hmm... Your Honor, we have just learned of another person involved who may have been the murderer. In light of this new fact, I hold that it's impossible to judge the defendant. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? And who, Mr. Wright? Who is this other person? Simple, it was... The man who checked in with Miss May! Oof! Wasn't that obvious, Edgeworth? Your Honor, as has been previously revealed, Miss April May was tapping the victim's phone, yet Miss May herself has an alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man that was with her. The bellboy saw no one else in the room at the time of the murder. M my, what a convenient little setup. But it's too late. Too late? I suppose you'd like it if it was too late, wouldn't you? After all, it was you who hid the presence of the other man from this court. Oof! Upstart. Amateur! Th these accusations are... ludicrous. Enough. The court acknowledges the defense's argument. I expect the prosecution and defense to look into this matter fully. Am I understood? Yes. <gasps> yes, Your Honor. That is all today for the trial of Maya Fay. Court is adjourned. September 7, 2.24pm, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Mr. Wright! 
You're amazing in there. R really? I think I might be your newest fan. Oh, I was just doing my job, you know. <laughs> then again, that other attorney was pretty cool too. Huh? That face of his, with his eyes wide and trembling lips, it sent shivers up my spine. Hmm, if you say so. So, what happens with me? Do I get to go home now? Um, well... No, I don't think so. Not yet. Oh, I see. But I got a great lead in today's trial. A lead? That man with Miss May, he's the key. Oh, I get it. What happened to Miss May after that, anyway? I heard they arrested her. I guess she's learning her charms won't work everywhere. She's probably at the detention centre now. I may have to go down there later. Anyway. This case is far from closed. Yes, sir! I'm gonna find out more about this man. Do you think he was the one who... Maybe so. Sis... Don't worry, I'll find him by tomorrow. I promise. I'm counting on you! Ask for a full record of April May's testimony. I thought it might come in handy during the trial tomorrow. But now that I have it, I'm not so sure. Most of her testimony was all lies. In fact, there's only one part that hasn't been stricken from the record. May testimony added to the court record. I don't know how much good this will do me at all now. Anyway, time to hit the pavement and do some investigating. Maya doesn't belong in that detention centre, and it's up to me to set her free. And that's the end of that episode, or chapter, or whatever. So, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, next time we'll be back to investigating. Um, yeah. Cool beans, um, bye!